Okay, so I'm speaking to Scotty McClue, and he's a radio host in Scotland, and he'll be telling us all about Burns Day. So please go right ahead and tell us about it, Scotty. Oh, absolutely, Herman. First, can I just say hello to the good people of Montserrat and wish you all the very best. And I hope also all the Montserrat people will manage to hear this broadcast at some point, and uh, it makes them all want to come back to Montserrat. Now, um, what we're talking about here, of course, it's Burns Night in Scotland, but it's Burns Night throughout the world, of course, Herman. And the last time I spoke to yourself and the good people of Montserrat was St Andrew's Night. That's a big night in Scotland, celebrating the patron saint of Scotland, going back to the time of Jesus. But Burns Night is effectively a second national day. It's celebrated on the 25th of January with Burns suppers, evening meals around the world, which might go on... uh, for most of the month of uh, uh, January and early February, but certainly the big night is the 25th of January, that's uh, tonight, and uh, it's widely observed on the National Day of St Andrews. The first bun supper in the Mother Club was in Greenock in the west of Scotland, and this was held on what they thought was Bun's birthday, the 29th of January, 1802, but in 1803 they discovered from the parish records in Ayrshire that the correct date was the 25th of January 1759. The format of the Burns Supper has not changed uh, since that date. It's a general welcome to everyone who arrives. It's followed by the Selkirk Grace. Some hay meat and cannot eat and some would eat but want it. But we have meat and we can eat so let the Lord be thank it. And uh, then the haggis is piped in and addressed. So the famous Burns poem the address to the haggis, fear for your honest, sonsy face, great chieftain or the pudding race. And then the haggis is cut up. The menu on the meal is uh, basically cockaliki soup or vegetable soup, haggis, neeps, turnips, and tatties, potatoes, and shortbread. So good uh, peasant fare, of course, enjoyed throughout the world and very, very nutritious. And uh, the people start eating, eating just after the haggis is presented. After the meal, there is an immortal memory to Robert Bums, which is an overview of his life and his work. And that concludes with the singing of Old Lang Syne. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for Old Lang Syne now. Robert Bums was born on the 25th of January 1759, Herman, and he died on the 21st of July 1796. He's known in Scotland simply as the Bard. He was perhaps one of the most famous poets and lyricists, and he's widely regarded as the national poet of Scotland, but he's celebrated worldwide, of course, very, very popular in Russia, very popular in uh, Montserrat and in the Bahamas and Australia and New Zealand, right across the whole of the world. Uh, But he's the best known of the poets to have written in the Scots language. And he influenced people like Charlotte Bronte and uh, S.T. Coleridge, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Percy Biss Shelley, Bob Dylan, the songwriter, and uh, William Wordsworth and J.D. Salinger, the writer of Catcher in the Rye. Uh, Also in uh, Scottish television in 2009, he was voted as being the greatest Scot ever, the runner-up being William Wallace, and of course I thought it might be myself, Scotty McClue. Now, as well as making original compositions, Bums has collected folk songs from across Scotland, famous ones like A Love Is Like a Red Red Rose, and A Man's A Man for all that. Now, a lot of them are absolutely immersed in socialism, and the socialist movement was regarded with suspicion because if you think about it, they were quite interesting times. Some would say dangerous times. The French Revolution was taking place in 1789, and there was Bums, the farmer, the lyricist, the excise man, in case farming didn't work out, and, of course, the poet. And I would just like to very briefly, Herman, read you the first uh, verse and another verse of A Man's A Man for All That. It's there for honest poverty that hangs his head and all that. The coward slave, we pass him by, we dare be poor for all that. For all that and all that, our toils obscure and all that. The rank is but the guinea's stamp. 
the man's the goad for all that. So there we are. So never mind the rank of a man. Uh, it's his uh, character that matters. He, that is the actual gold. And uh, you see on Berkey Cod, a lord who struts and steers and all that, though well, hundreds worship at his word, he is but a coof for all that. That means he's an idiot. And with his ribbon star, the man of independent mind lives and laughs at all that. So people will be celebrating right across the world tonight, and of course, much love to the good people of Montserrat. And just to let you know that, of course, Robert Burns died on uh, the 21st of July, 1796, but there he is being remembered on his 252nd birthday. So to the good people of Montserrat, can I wish you from the people of Scotland a very happy Burns night. Think of the bard, think of the ordinary people across the world, and think of the celebration, and I'm sure his name will be remembered in thousands of years. Herman, thank you for your time. It's been lovely talking to you, and as I say, I send best wishes to Montserrat from across the world. Thank you very much, Scotty. We really appreciate that, and uh, all the information you've given us, really useful information, and I'm sure the listeners find it very useful indeed, and very interesting as well. Bless you, Herman. Lovely to talk to you, and I hope we get the opportunity and the privilege to speak again.